what you have here is uh, on the left end you have a series of uh, documents so if you're not able to see the screen you can uh, um, you can look at the last slide which is titled putting it all together so on the left end you have this corpus of documents and you have a, a white arrow going to the right from it and that arrow indicates the tokenization and, and the box on the right indicates tokenization and linguistic pre-processing. This is what we discussed in chapter 2. Okay, so it's that same pipeline being shown here. The output of the tokenization and linguistic pre-processing phase is of two kinds. There's one arrow going to the left towards something that, that's called a document cache. So what the document cache would store is the processed output of uh, the, the tokenization and linguistic pre-processing phase. And this is something we haven't looked at yet, but we'll be looking at this in the next chapter. Because the document cache is going to be useful in generating snippets when the results are returned to the user. Okay, so when uh, uh, when you see a list of documents in uh, uh, you know when you do a Google search, for example, along with the results, Google also shows you some brief snippets from the document containing the query terms. Okay, so how do you generate those snippets? That is where the document cache comes in useful, and we'll see how that is done in the next chapter. But uh, let's focus on the other arrow now, which is going down towards this block called indexers. Notice the plural, indexers. Okay, you don't have a single indexer now, because you'll be building from the output of the tokenization and linguistic preprocessing phase a, a whole set of indexes. Okay, as I just mentioned in the query parsing uh, module, uh, you know, the query parser could submit a sequence of queries to different indexes in order to answer that single user query. Okay, so um, you need different kinds of indexes therefore to be built in the first place so that the different kinds of indexes can be queried at need by the query parser. So on the left side, below the indexers uh, block you see the output of the indexer which are which is shown as four different indexes the leftmost index is titled metadata and zone and field indexes okay so you have a separate index for fields and zones maybe you could have more than one uh, zone or field index but you know as as we saw in a previous slide zone indexes can be implemented as a single index which where uh, you disambiguate between the different zones based on either terms in the dictionary or you know entries in the postings themselves so that's one kind of index you could build on the document metadata you could build another kind of index for inexact top k retrieval okay this would be sort of a vector space uh, index that with the optimizations that we have discussed in this chapter okay with some of the optimizations or some combination of one or more of the optimizations that we've discussed to do in exact top k retrieval why in exact because we want to do the computation fast so we don't really care for the absolute exact top k documents because after all they only uh, are a proxy for users ha for the users happiness we can afford to be in exact in the interest of speeding up the computation. So that would be another index that could be built by the indexer. Another, a third index that could be built by the indexer. Okay, note, notice that all these indexes are built are being built in parallel. Okay, so all of them are going to exist at the same time. You could build a tiered inverted positional index. Okay, you could build a separate positional index and this is something you could build to capture uh, scores like the query proximity score, oh, sorry, uh, what was the name of that score? Qu query term proximity that we discussed a couple of slides ago. So that is, or, or to execute phrase queries, for example. Phrase queries necessarily require uh, 
a positional index unless you have something like a byword index which we saw in chapter 2 is going to be pretty expensive so uh, you can have a you can maintain a positional index for that purpose and this positional index could be tiered right it could be tiered based on authority score uh, even your inexact top k retrieval index could be tiered okay you can think of adding uh, tiering to different kinds of indexes and then finally the fourth index is shown which is the k gram index which is going to be useful for spelling correction okay so all these indexes can be built and then if you move to the top further on the right you see this user query box okay the user is submitting a query there and the query parser is receiving the query and the query parser is doing two things okay it's submitting the query directly to one or more of these four indexes and it's also submitting that query to a separate spell correction module which is relying on the k gram index to do spelling correction okay this is one way the query parser could behave another way the query parser could behave is it could first submit the query directly to the indexes see if there are many documents result returned or not if there are very few documents returned then it could decide to do spelling correction and submit that same query to a spell correction module okay so uh, there's no single way here to design this kind of a system but anyway so from these different indexes you would finally receive a list of documents with a set of associated scores okay the positional index could return you the query proximity score the uh, zone and field indexes could return matching documents with scores associated with the different zones and the inexact top k retrieval index could uh, could return a list of scores based on cosine similarity scoring okay so all those scores would then be combined by some machine learning algorithm that would aggregate those scores okay and then rank the documents based on the overall score okay and it would choose the top 10 or so of them and return them and and display them on the results page so this machine learning uh, module is shown in the top, bottom right corner of this slide stage labeled as mlr machine learned relevance or machine learned yeah relevance so it's going to rely on something called a training set actually you don't need to know this right now but there's something called supervised learning where you teach a computer to learn something about the data that you are feeding it you're you're feeding it training examples you're saying you're telling the computer look for this query these are the set of good documents these are the set of relevant documents for this query these are the set of relevant documents so the computer is looking at more and more examples in the training phase and learning to to extract patterns from what it's seeing and based on what patterns it sees it assigns appropriate weights to the different scores okay and then it uses the weights to to score new documents that were not present that were not presented to it in the training phase it would rely on test documents which are the actual documents that are coming in from the user uh, that that are being returned by the search system in response to actual queries from the user and then it would score and rank uh, the, the scoring and ranking module would then combine or uh, aggregate the scores using the weights pro uh, provided by the machine learning algorithm to combine the scores and then return the results on the results page any questions about this i think we've done with this chapter and uh, if you are able to stare at this diagram for some time you should be able to see how the different chapters we have discussed so far plug into different portions of this diagram okay there are some po portions which we haven't yet studied we haven't studied this document cache thing and we haven't looked at the machine learning uh, uh, part of uh, it so that's something we'll see later on but other than that you should be able to you know think about Uh, the different chapters you've studied and map them uh, to this to this data flow diagram which puts it all together